what is going on guys welcome back to another video and today we're going to be going over the al central cards that you guys wanted to see in the game because this episode i went off uh viewer feedback didn't get a lot of it on the comment section in the last video got some on twitter though uh so we're gonna use some most of that and some from the comment section uh if you're wondering why my voice sounds a little nasally i i'm pretty sure i'm getting sick um but i'm still gonna record this video for you guys and recently i believe actually yesterday i hit three thousand subscribers want well, to thank you guys so much for the recent support and without further ado let's just get right into the video all right first off we're gonna be going i want to organize these now in a better way i'm going from the top of the division uh the record this year uh and to the bottom of course so we're starting off with the indians um i didn't have five from each team this time i want to make the video a little shorter uh, than 40 minutes so first off we're gonna be going with travis hafner uh, he was pretty. He was a good power hitter for the Indians, and also had a short year for the Yankees. Uh, never was an All Star, uh, so this card, I, he, he didn't wear a hardware. It wasn't a rookie. It wasn't a breakout card. Uh, so I figured it would be a uh, impact veteran card because they did make a 26 year old impact veteran Alcides Escobar uh, in 16. I mean, in 17 the show. Uh, so I wouldn't doubt it uh he had a really good year uh, as you can see right here on the numbers i'm not gonna um read off every individual stat and all that stuff because it just makes the video way too long he finished eighth in the mvp uh going off of what he would be he played first base of course he was the dh mostly that year uh so really the first baseman uh and it just easily i don't know how good of a fielder he was he probably have low fielding uh but you know you know, of course, you see the average and the home runs and the power, the slugging, the OPS. I believe this guy would be a diamond. I'm not sure how uh, high of rating you'll see. Uh, what I believe these guys would be on the player card are in the video. I haven't made those yet for this video. I'm recording it <laughs> on the 30th of November right now. Hopefully, I can get it out tomorrow. Uh, but we'll see. All right, next we have a viewer suggested comment. Of course, also Travis Hafner uh, was suggested by. Oh god, I forgot who. Hold on, I want to make sure I get this right. All right, Travis Hafner was of course uh, suggested by uh, DraftNet Gaming. Thank you for the uh, suggestion as always. Uh, now Albert Bell was actually suggested by Kevin Jenkins. Uh, of course, I will put the screenshot on the screen. Uh, he said he mentioned. In 1995, it's the only 50 home run, 50 plus double season ever. Also hit 317 with only 80 strikeouts. Finished second in the MVP voting that year. It a monster card, 690 slugging, 317 by number 50 home runs, 52 doubles. Insane. Uh, we it would be of course an all-star card by the way uh in that season he was an outfielder let's see his fielding uh he had a 981 fielding percentage so maybe in the 70s as a fielder uh but with those hitting numbers alone i don't know wait at least you could probably check that that would be left field probably also wait left field um you need an arm i don't know how good of an arm he had uh pretty i'm pretty sure that determines a lot of the ratings uh, not a little, a little bit of the rating because the arm strength is really needed in the corners of the outfield. Uh, but, of course, definitely would be a diamond. I'm um, just not sure what leverage of a overall. All right, next, and finally, we have Manny Ramirez on the Indians. Of course, a lot of people know him from his uh, Red Sox days, but he did start in the uh, Cleveland area. I don't know what I'm trying to say there. Uh, but I'm between two seasons. Um... I'm pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure I want to go 2000, uh, but 1999, he had an insane year as well. Uh, you can read the stats right there. Pause the video if you want. Uh, but I'm going to be going off, I believe, 2000 because his OPS was higher and his slugging was higher. Uh, but he did play a lot less games, so if they did decide to choose 2000, it would probably be like the Hanley Ramirez Impact Veteran card. Uh, but, you know, just to go along with that, his fielding was quite bad. Uh, he was a 986 fielder and then a 975 fielder, and then he this his, his fielding went lower from there. But I don't think he was that bad of a fielder with the Indians. Uh, but I would, of course, still rate this as a diamond card. I'm just not sure, of course, how high. All right, now we have the Minnesota Twins cards. Of course, they finished second. 
I believe, yeah, second in the AL Central. They made the wild card, of course. Uh, we're going first card. We're gonna go up to 2002 of Tory Hunter. Uh, I will put. So I, I'm recording this. You know, I'm getting a little sick. I already mentioned that a little earlier. Uh, I just can't remember. Of course, in my on the K, uh, train of thought that who suggested these, but uh, don't worry. The people, everybody who suggested each and every card. Uh, will be up on screen when I mention that said player. Uh, but anyway, 2002 would be an all-star card. 289, 29 home runs, 37 doubles, 59 slug, uh, OPS. Uh, 2002, he played the outfield and was a center fielder. Uh, he also had a 992 uh, fielding, and he was, I believe, a gold glover. Yes, he was. Now, I don't remember how good of an arm Tony Hunter had, uh, but just... On the Gold Glove alone, the great fielding percentage, uh, probably in the high 80s, 90, great contact and decent like 80s probably power, or oh, and probably you know high 70s. I'd say this would be a diamond card again. Not totally sure on how low or high. All right, next we have Johan Santana, Triple Crown winner of course as a pitcher in 2006, but. Uh, we're not going to be using 2006, we're going to be using 2004. I could use either of them. Could even use his 2008 with the Mets, which was also insane as well. Uh, just <coughs> low strikeouts compared to his innings, so his case per nine wasn't that high. Anyway, uh, 261 ERA, 120 games, which doesn't matter. He wasn't an all-star for some reason. Didn't know that. Uh, but of course, it would be a hard word card if I didn't mention that already. Uh, 265 strikeouts, 10.5 K per nine, 0 0.921 whip. Would be really, really good. I predict this card will be a 99 overall. Pretty much simply, to put it English. Yeah. And this card was suggested. Of course, it'll be on the screen. That's my phone going off, of course. Made record, and it's going off again. G all the notifications, Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, this one mentioned a breakout, Miguel Sano. Um, but I didn't really think... Yeah, a breakout. I feel like a rookie. I feel like this rookie card would be a lot better. Uh, you know, this in short games still had a good average and home run power, uh, five thirty slugging, nine sixteen OPS. Uh, I believe it would be a low diamond, like maybe 90, 91, 92. Uh, but uh, just wanted to mention it, of course, because I'm going off the suggestions, trying to get as many suggestions in as possible. And then finally, for the twins, Kirby Puckett. I believe was suggested by Bengal. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're going after the 1998 season. Uh, he was an all-star. He hit 234 hits, 24 home runs, 42 doubles, 6 to 1 bases. Was caught seven times though. Uh, low strikeouts, also way low walks. Uh, 30, 30, 356 average, 920 OPS. Really, really good. Also won the Gold Glove. I believe in a Silver Slugger too. Uh, so I believe this guy would be probably a 90. Let's see where he feels. I don't remember. He was an outfielder, right? Yeah, he, he was an outfielder. He was a center fielder. One gold glove. I don't remember how strong, of course, of arm uh, he was. So we could see probably a little bit. Uh, 12 assists. Uh, I don't know how much that would be into his overall and how high the arm strength that would be. Uh, but I don't think it would be bad at all. I believe this card would be between the ratings roughly 95 to 99. Uh, and that is Curry Puckett. We could also have gone with his postseason. In I didn't. Well, the main reason I didn't choose the postseason, of course, probably like, you know, the, of course, he's remembered for the oh, uh, uh, English. <laughs> uh, he was of course remembered for how good he was, but also for the uh, 1991 playoffs and the I believe he hit the uh, he was the one who hit the walk off home run, and with the call, we will see you tomorrow night. Very famous right there. Uh, I mean, I you could probably have used that. I just didn't really look at it because 250 average. But uh, maybe if you guys want to see that, uh, as you think that would have been a better choice, just let me know. And next, we have the Royals. And we're going to be going over Eric Hosmer. And we're not going to be doing any regular season. We're going over the playoffs. 2014 the playoffs when they made the World Series and lost in seven games to the San Francisco Giants. Uh, in the first game, he had two, he had four at bats, three hits in the wild card game, had an RBI, a triple, and two walks. Very good game. Uh, 2014, in the ALDS against the Angels, where they swept the Angels, he was uh, four for ten, which is still good. Two, had a 400 average, two home runs, four RBIs, three walks, 
and four strikeouts. Very good ALDS. ALCS, uh, he had four games. It was a sweep as well. Six hits and three RBIs and home runs. Two walks, four strikeouts. Had a 400 average as well. In the World Series, he had seven hits uh, in 28 play appearances, four RBIs, two walks, eight strikeouts. Wasn't as great as the other performances, but uh, the entirety of the 2014 postseason, Eric Hosmer was a beast, helping them get to the World Series, of course, unfortunately, to get uh, eliminated in seven games against the Giants, which was a pretty good series. Uh, but I believe this card would be, because he was still a good fielder at the time, uh, and of course during the playoffs, I believe he would be a 90 to 95 overall, just of how his hitting is. Of course, I don't know the in-depth splits of what he did during the postseason, uh, that's just my prediction. Alright, next, a, cor a, cor a, cord a card that I'd personally love to see in the game, just because, you know, who cares, it's Joe, ba it's Joe, it's Bo Jackson. Uh, it's Bo Jackson, 1989 All-Star card. Of course, if you guys did not know, Bo Jackson was a football player and a baseball player at the same time. One of the best uh, multi-sports players of all time. Uh, of course, there's Deion Sanders as well. Uh, but anyway, 32 home runs, 15 doubles. Had a lot of strikeouts, though. Uh, so I believe this card would be a high gold because uh, he had really good fielding. He had a cannon of an arm. Uh, so that will probably carry his... Uh, fielding but he'll probably have mid 60s to 70s contact and uh probably eight high 80s power uh, i predict probably an 89 88 overall if they did make this card uh yeah that's all i have to say <laughs> and finally i know this one of course well i know who this was suggested by by uh i literally said who i knew who it was and i spaced out <laughs> he wasn't suggested by nico was here uh thank you for the suggestion nico uh 2015 Kendris Morales, Impact Veteran, uh, he hit 41 doubles, 165 hits, 22 are, uh, home runs, and a 290 average, and helped them make the playoffs again, of course. Uh, I believe he's a switch hitter, he uh, was a DH, I believe, the whole season, so he wouldn't have good fielding, he'd probably have the same amount of fielding as he does in his live series card. Uh, he had great power, I don't know on which side, of course, so I can't predict that, uh, but he had good contact as well. His Second highest in his career, uh, actually no, third highest. Sorry. Uh, so I I I probably say this card would be around the breakout card where this uh, 2009 Angels one card was that's in the game. Uh, maybe a little bit higher. Uh, probably a little lower actually, just because uh, he had a much better season with the Angels there. Uh, so possibly just around that range of what that card was. All right, now we are on to the. All right, now we're on to the White Sox. I almost went to the Tigers because I completely forgot the Tigers are the worst league in the uh, worst record in the league this year. Uh, kind of, I, 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 that still surprises me. But anyway, uh, we're gonna be going over another suggestion by Bengal, uh, Bengal Designs, of course. Check them out if you haven't already. Uh, but uh, the big, uh, well, by his, <laughs> by his tweet, the big, fucking, hurt. Frank Thomas. Uh, now, of course, I mentioned in the other video how I'd love to see a big hurt card on the White Sox of the MVP card, and here it is. Of course, it's going to be a 99 overall. You could pause and look at the stats. Look at the greatness. It's going to be a hard work card. If I, didn't, I forgot, I think I met, forgot to mention uh, some of the other cards stats what well, they would be, but that's my bad. You could probably tell by the cards are in the video. Uh, but uh, 113 games. Uh, this basically would be like Bagwell, but not. I don't think as great as a fielder. I don't remember how good of a fielder Frank Thomas was because he did play a lot of first base and uh, DH. He was kind of split on that and more of a DH till the, towards the end of his career. Uh, but just insane power, great contact. Probably would be a great example of the Bagwell this year. Uh, and he also be really slow though. Of course, great discipline, great vision, really good card, big effing hurt. Frank Thomas. Now this one was Joe Creedy. Someone uh, is it Creed? Is it Creed? Creedy? Creedy? Uh, looks like a Creedy. Uh, uh, it's of course another one suggested him. I uh, was kind of thinking it would be his 2006 season. Uh, 31 doubles, 30 home runs, 283 average. He was a Silver Slugger. Didn't have an All Star or a another season. I guessed probably an impact veteran. Also, if you look down here in the 2005 p 
playoff run. He had, he didn't do good in the ALDS. Uh, he was good in the ALCS, and then he was decent in the World Series. So I don't know if I should have done postseason or Impact Veteran. Uh, I'll probably put, put uh, both card art in the video, or I'll probably forget as usual because I'm sick, and I'll probably you know not even remember that or watch this part during the video again. Uh, but let me know who you what you who what uh, you would do uh, as a card. Uh, what would what would be a better card in your opinion, guys? Uh, the 2006 probably impact veteran card 31 doubles 30 uh, home runs 28 walks 58 strikeouts 283 average and 828 OPS or the postseason where he was pretty good besides the ALDS um, rethinking this probably should have done the postseason card which I'm gonna go probably pick that and say he would be a low diamond all right another user comment on the video this time Scott Putsednik uh, of course, a lot of people forget about him, but uh, he was a really fast player, uh, and he was an all-star one year. So, there's that. Uh, he, of course, this Setnik card would be the 2005 postseason. He had a pretty good postseason. Uh, he had a total, we can just look at the one-year series right here. He only had played in the playoffs once, uh, one year. Uh, 14 hits, he had a 286 average, 948 slugging, 2 home runs, 3 triples, 1 double, 6 stolen bases were caught 3 times though, 7 walks and 10 strikeouts. I'd say this probably be a high, mid gold probably, uh, he was really fast, I don't know how good of a fielder he was, I believe, yeah, he was an outfielder, and he had decent power numbers, the slugging is gonna go in with the triples and doubles and home runs combined. Uh, so, maybe low 70s, high 60s power, uh, and a decent, like, mid-80s contact, and decent fielding, and that's a pretty, pretty decent card, if you, if I, uh, ask me. I don't know English right now. And then finally, we have, uh, the Tigers and their flashbacks that you guys suggested for this video. Uh, Carlos Guillen is going to be number one, 2004 All-Star card. He had a 318 batting average, a 921 OPS, 20 home runs, 37 doubles, 10 triples, 12 stolen bases, 87 uh, strikeouts, and 52 walks. A really good season for Carlos Guillen. He also had a pretty nice playoffs, but uh, other than that, I'd, pr I'd probably use this uh, 2004 season. And let's just check 2004. He was a short, so 974 feeling percentage. Uh, let's see when he airs, 17. Uh, so he'd probably be a low 80s fielder. Uh, I don't know how uh, uh, like their stuff would be. I predict this card would probably be like a 90 to 94 overall. Maybe lower. Maybe overestimating that overall. Uh, but whatever. <laughs> All right, next we have Maglio Ordonez, of course, the player who hit the walk-off home run off Houston Street to send the Tigers to the World Series where they did lose to the Cardinals, uh, but that is besides the point. We're going to be going off to the year after they lost to the World Series. Uh, 2007, All-Star card, he was second in MVP voting, 54 doubles, 28 home runs. Uh, 79 strikeouts, 76 walks, 363 batting average of 1.029 OPS. Insane numbers. Uh, I believe he was an outfielder. He was a right fielder. He had a 996 fielding percentage as well. So really good fielder, really good hitter. I believe this card would be probably 95 to a 97 overall. And when I got this suggestion for this card, I was kind of confused because uh, it was Brandon Inge. I kind of, you know, I forgot he was a player. Not gonna lie. Uh, but we're gonna—he had it was an all-star one year. He was a great fielder. Uh, but other than that, I don't really see how good of the card this would be. One sixty-one games played, two hundred nine all-star card by the way. Tw uh, Sixteen doubles, one triple, twenty-seven home runs, a career high. Uh, two stolen bases, fifty-four. Uh, walks, 170 strikeouts, also a career high, and a 230 average, and a 720 OPS. So, not really good, not really great. It could have been probably this different year, like uh, 2006. Uh, but I really don't. Maybe actually, maybe it would be 2006. Maybe I am wrong. Maybe it would be a Impact Veteran. God, those all these pop-ups. Impact Veteran 2006. 
Brandon Ninge, uh, 29 doubles, 27 home runs, two triples, 182, 128 strikeouts, 253 averages. So it's a better than the other one. Uh, they didn't make the World Series this year. Uh, so I guess that makes a little more sense to uh, impact veteran Brandon Ninge. Uh, he was a really good fielder, I know that. Uh, but I just don't... Well, I may be stupid in saying that. Let me check. Uh, I guess he wasn't that great. <laughs> Well, I look like an idiot now, uh, but I'd say maybe a low gold, maybe like a 87, 88 overall, but I don't know. I can't, I don't think I can get this one even close to right. Finally, to end off this video, we have Cecil Fielder, 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 God, I can't speak. Uh, in 1990, he was an all-star, second MP MVP voting, 25 doubles, 51 home runs. Uh, of course, no stolen bases. 90 walks, a career-high in uh, strikeouts, though. 592 slugging, 969 OPS, 277 average. I believe this would just be a power, power, power card. Uh, 1990, let's see his fielding numbers. He was a first base, too. So I believe it would be... Uh, if it's all power, of course, and he was a decent fielder, uh, I believe it would be E96 overall if they did make this card. Uh, I don't know. Uh, but what I really want to say to end this video off is, uh, I know on, on the last video I made about this, there was comments like, where's A-Rod? What about, um, what about Alfonso Soriano? What about Pudge? Why? Why would? He, why didn't you name this guy? Why don't you do that? 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 Um, which is understandable. Uh, I tried to pick players that you know really haven't had cards before. Of course, there's probably gonna be someone that says, "But you did hundred pins." Whatever. I, I was an exception. Uh, I, uh, I, I understand what you guys are saying. Of course, I do also think those cards should be in the game. I'm now this video. I really, sh I really hope I don't get those comments again. Uh, not just not because I didn't hate them, uh, only because this was user suggested uh, cards for this video, and I want to be taking your guys' suggestions for the next episode, which is the AL East flashbacks and legends. So comment the player, well, players or player from a team or all the teams in the AL East to have a flashback or a legend. So just name a flashback or a legend, a legend that you want to see in MLB The Show 18 from the AL East, which is just a reminder, the Yankees, the Red Sox, the Blue Jays, the Orioles, and the Tampa Bay Rays. And you'll get shouted out in the next video if I choose your card. Uh, of course, uh, also just comment, uh, of course, the uh, there's also uh, two other shout outs. Shout out to, shout out to Bryson Prezas. I'm sorry if I said that wrong. I uh, I'm not great at pronouncing names, and uh, I feel bad if I pronounce names wrong. And also, shout out to KJ Gaming. That's gonna be it for this video, guys. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you want to see more of these card series, like this card series, of course, uh, tweet at me cards you want. If you tweet at me uh, and you follow me on Twitter, make sure you do that. By the way, at Hi I Am Serenity. Uh, if you want to tweet me your suggestion instead. Uh, if you do tweet me, uh, you submit when you, like, okay, when you tweet me the player that you want to suggest for the next episode, which, by the way, just a reminder, is the AL East, uh, submit that, like, the, make, make sure you tell me the year of the player that you want, like, the what year that they played in that you want to make me, uh, show off in the next video, and provide the card art from that year if you can. Uh, this makes it a lot easier for me to edit and get all the cards together for the next episode. Uh, again, I'm just blabbering on. Hope you guys did enjoy. I love the support from the last episode. Um, over 100 comments in a couple of days. Very much appreciated. Uh, hashtag grow the 4K now because uh, we hit 3K thanks to you awesome people. And again, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And I need to go recover because I feel pretty, pretty sick right now. Uh, hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And I'll see you all next time. I've been crazy, lost my daydream, breaking molds that people gave me lately. Baby, I've been feeling ways that make me feel like shady. I've been faded on it daily. I can feel my heart is changing. Coming back from darkness, my whole brain is rearranging. And I feel like the world is the dirt beneath my feet.
And I feel in this world we 